Hi there guys, I've been out trekking around the woodlands today, trying out my new backpack. I managed to get hold of a Maxpedition Exantha pack from the United States and it arrived not too long ago. And I've kitted it out and organised my gear and headed out into the woodlands today just trekking around just for a few miles just to see how it feels and how it wears and I've been very impressed with it and I will do a review on it soon. This is the Exantha, so there's a Zafar as well and the two look very similar, the Zafar being a 28 litre the Xantha is a 32, which is this one, the bigger one. And uh, Maxpedition brought these out some time ago. It's sort of like an internal backpack, or sorry, an internal frame backpack. And it's their way of entering into that market. But very good, um, very much more comfortable than my Condor 2, you know, when it's really loaded. And uh, it sits on the hips well and doesn't kind of ache your shoulders. So I've been very happy with it. I've also been out IDing some mushrooms today. I brought my field guide out and uh, it's good to take advantage of this time of year. There's plenty of mushrooms around and you know, if you wait around too long, they'll all disappear and you'll have to wait another year for the majority of the crop to be out. So I've got some interesting ones in front of me. I've got a Cortinarius, a Birch Belite, a couple of Russellus, and Piptoporus betulinus, which I was using as a plaster a little bit earlier on in the day. But one thing I normally do is stop and have lunch and that's generally my procedure throughout the day. I'll sort of start off walking quite a long way. I'll drink all of my water and then I'll find the water source, stop for lunch, sterilise the water and have some food. And then I'm generally topped up to walk back again or carry on the rest of the day and make my way home. But one thing I wanted to run past you today and what this video is about was cleaning your pots and pans, you know, cleaning your steels whilst you're out in the field. You know, so we all have to cook and we all use our pots and pans and sometimes a lot of people bring soaps and detergents and things like that with them to kind of clean all their kit. You know, if you try and take what's at home and you try and replicate it out here, it doesn't always work. So you've got to keep things simple and sustainable and that way a kit will look after itself and it'll be a lot easier for you to do that as well, for you to maintain it. So what I bring with me is one of these steel pan scrubbers and that's it and that's my cleaning kit for my pots and pans and I wanted to run through today how I use it. So you can see first of all I'm just running an open fire here. And I do most of my cooking on open fires so having a heat source is all part of the process of cleaning this stuff. And you don't want your heat source or your fire to burn out before you've cleaned your pots and pans. So I've chucked a few sticks on there and then I'm going to head down to my water source and get these things cleaned up because they're obviously covered with soot when they've been exposed to the fire and they're full of food and I obviously don't want to leave that in there when I put it in my pack. So this is our water source and it's very stagnant and there are little pools like this dotted all over this little stream where it's obviously dried up over the summer because the uh, water levels dropped obviously because there's not been much rain and it's been very hot. In the winter this would be very high and it'd be flowing quite steadily and it'd be a much more reliable water source where you could drink from it um, by taking your container and putting it in facing it downstream and then taking it back up and just sterilizing it but when it's like this I would use a bandana and I'd layer that bandana four or five times and fill the container very slowly if I was drinking from it and that would help remove sediment and then I could sterilize it on the fire and it'd be safe to drink and I've done that many a time from water sources just like this one some of them have been worse but when it comes to cleaning I'm not using any detergent or soaps or anything like that I'm just using a pan scrubber scrubbing off the uh, sediment from the fire and little bits of food which will just go on go into the water and they're not going to damage the environment so I've got nothing to worry about and when I am scrubbing pots and pans, all I'm looking for is a little bit of liquid to aid in the scrubbing process. Just so I'm not kneeling in stagnant water, I'm just going to take some water with my guide bottle. And that way I don't have to stand in all of this muck and uh, do some cleaning. So I can use this just on the riverbank. So now I've got some water, I can just pour a bit in here. And just scrub with the pan scrubber like this. the little bits of food get collected in the actual scrubber itself which is quite useful actually and they're easy to get out as well so don't worry too much about that just yet but you can see that's cleaned out pretty well I can scrub the side if it's been in the fire 
and the underside too. You know, get that all cleaned up. And there it is, nice and clean. There's a few bits on it, but I'm not too worried about that, so that can be put aside. And that's ready for sterilising. With this guide bottle, you might want to scrub off the sediment from the fire, but eventually it gets caked on anyway. I mean, this one's fairly new. You can see it comes off some areas, but not others. So you can take the majority off if you really want to. So I've got all the food and soot off of these, and they're clean to a degree. If this was a really fast flowing clean water source, and I trusted it, I wouldn't really need to do much else to these, you know, I could just use them as they were. If I was operating around a camp and I wasn't going anywhere, I could leave them to the side and not worry about sterilising them. But because this water source is stagnant and horrible, if I now want to use these, or put them in my pack and leave, I might want to dry them, but I, more importantly, I want to sterilise these in the fire, you know, to kill anything that's on them from this stagnant water source. And the same can be done with this pan scrubber. You can see, you can just shake the water out of these and don't worry about little particles of food. Most of the particles of food have now been removed from that and they've all just been shaken out. So don't worry too much about food getting stuck in them. It does come out very easily, uh, but this will go in the fire too and become sterile and all of this can then go in my pack dry and clean and ready to use again. So let's go back up to the fire. Okay, so the fire's burnt out almost. There's lots of embers still there. Still very, very hot. You can obviously just hover your hand over and I can't keep my hand there. So that's a nice hot fire. And we can just put our piece of metal in the fire now. And then just sit them in the embers, just like that. And then that will sterilize them and dry them. And then we can put them in our pack. So you can see these are steaming away quite happily. And obviously when the steam stops, all the water's gone. But that doesn't mean you should take them off. It just means you leave them there for a little bit longer, just to make sure the whole thing is hot to touch, almost too hot to touch. And then you know it's fairly sterile and uh, dry, obviously, and you can put it back in your pack. But what I will say is just to look after your, your steels. If you have titanium products or thin sheeted products, you don't want to put them on a really, really hot bed of embers or an open flame where they'll begin to warp, especially really thin titanium products. Some of them will warp very badly. When you'll notice in the instructions, it says do not put on the fire without anything in it, simply because you don't want it to warp and that's what they're sort of trying to avoid. This guide bowl can take a lot of abuse. It's very thick surgical steel. And this thing here, which is very hot now, I don't really care too much about the little scrubber because I can obviously get another one if I leave it there by mistake. But my mug here, um, you can see that's, that's pretty much too hot to touch now. So if I get that out very quickly, um, you can use a stick obviously and not just do what I do and grab it. You can see that that's sterile now and nice and dry and I'll wait for the others to finish and then we can uh, just brush them off and put them in the pack. So 
we've washed and sterilised our pots and our pans and obviously if we had some fresh drinking water we could transfer that to this cup and drink quite happily and not worry about that contaminated water being in there. And the nice thing about this is your kit's clean and dry and it can just go straight in your pack now. But there's a bit of ash on it and what I usually do is just find a bit of moss on a tree and it just wipes, you know, the, mo the moss just wipes the, uh, the ash off. You can even just use your hands if you really want to or a bandana. You know, and that's, uh, that's it, exactly the way it came out. And this scrubby thing, just literally do that. Just flick a bit of the ash off there. You can see it just discolours really, it doesn't actually, um, you know, burn or degrade too badly if you just put it on embers. And let, you know, if you're roasting it on a really hot fire, you can ruin them, so that can go in there. And we've got our guide bottle, and that can just be the same. And there we go, so the lid can go back on that. And that's all ready to go back in the pack. If you've got titanium sporks or steel pots and pans, you can obviously put those on the fire and sterilise them. If you've got a wooden spoon like this, you can't do that. You can wash this as I did down at the river and then just leave it to dry for a while and it'll be okay to use, provided it is properly dry and you can leave them around the fire to dry off. But the best thing to do if you are gonna use it around the camp again and again and you know you are, is uh, just to kind of not wash it down at that dirty water source. and either use some clean water at camp or use your hands or lick off the bits of food and leave it somewhere you know and that way it's never really going to get contaminated because I'm not going to be using this for a little while now I know that I can wash it and just take it away with me and not worry about it but if you are operating a camp you might just want to keep it up here and not expose it to that dirty water. So I hope that video helped out guys with just cleaning pots and pans in the field with minimal kit required and you're not having to rely on any kind of unsustainable soapy stuffs that you're, you're buying and bringing out with you that could potentially contaminate water sources. You don't really want them kind of in your kit anyway because it's just another kind of expendable item that you're depending on. If you refine your systems properly you can find really easy ways around things just with the tools you've got out in the field and it can become very very sustainable. Washing kit is, and maintaining kit is very simple, it's just you'll find you'll meet a lot of people who don't actually do it when they're out and they leave it till when they get home you know as an excuse for using it in the sink and washing up and stuff but it's best to do these jobs outdoors because then you really do push your kit and develop it even simple stuff like hygiene and washing pots and pans all these little jobs they can often be the most important sometimes and they can really kind of make and break your morale when you're outside just doing jobs around a campfire it sounds silly but it is true but there are other things you can use if you want to go like fully natural with it. You know, if you want to just take your containers out and go very minimal, you can use sphagnum moss as a pan scrubber. It just doesn't do as rough a job as the, the steel scrubber, obviously, but you can use it and it does work just fine. You can also use different types of fungi, like that mushroom I used as a plaster earlier, Piptoporus betulinus or birch polypore. That, when it gets mature, will develop a very kind of yellow, scary, thick layer underneath the bracket of the sporing tubes. And if you dry it, it'll become like a pumice stone. And if you soak it in water, you can soften it up a little bit and it can be a bit more pliable to work with. And you can clean your whole body with one of those and they are very useful, just like a sort of mild pumice stone. Brilliant for scrubbing pots and pans as well. So it really just depends on how you want your kit to be structured and what resources you really think are gonna be available to you in the environment you're in. And obviously, of course, how long are you gonna be out there? So I hope this video helped and uh, thank you for watching again. You can always check me out on Twitter, I've got a Twitter account now and I've obviously got a website so I'll be doing updates on there fairly regularly from now on. So thank you again for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again guys and take care.